Joining us now to discuss all these uh, job killing and prosperity killing policies, we bring in economist Steve Moore and my old friend Austin Goolsby, former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under President Obama and a professor at the University of Chicago. Austin, it is great to see you, first of all. Thanks for coming on the show. And um, second of all, uh, you heard my riff. You probably aren't shocked to hear it. What's your take on this big tax hike green package? Well, Larry, they don't know you like I know you. I could hear the pain and the <laughs> flummoxedness in your voice that you cannot understand why massive majorities of America, including majorities of your beloved Republicans, support the bill that was just passed. And the markets themselves went up because they said we finally have a national strategy to stop the pandemic and deal with these problems. By the way, uh, I love that point. Um, the markets went up in large measure. Uh, there's another story today in Market Watch. Uh, people getting the cash are spending it on stocks, and they're spending it on Bitcoin also, which is fabulous. So you're right. More cash, more money for stocks and Bitcoin. I don't think that was the intention, Austin. But Austin, before we bring our pal Steve Moore in, give me, uh, give me your take. There's a lot of tax hike talk in the air as part of this uh, green infrastructure bill. Senator Schumer is now calling it the climate infrastructure bill. So they're on the table. W what's your thinking on this? Well, look, I, I think that high income people and big corporations got their taxes cut more than were ever cut before by Donald Trump. And that tax bill, no matter what you say, remains the most unpopular tax cut in the history of American polling because it's widely perceived not to show that cutting it at the top has great magic beanstalk bean impacts on the economy, but because the evidence shows that the growth rate of wages, of median wages, actually went down from what it was growing before the tax cut was passed. So Joe Biden said he was going to raise rates back to what they were historically on high-income people, and I think he's going to do that. And he's going to use the money to pay for big infrastructure, not just about energy, but about transportation, about telecommunications and others. And I think that's going to be massively popular again, just like the recovery program was. Steve Moore, uh, does our friend Austin Goldsby have his facts right on the Trump tax cut? Uh, no, he doesn't, Larry. And, and I was thinking when Austin was speaking that I was remembering back, what was it, five or six years ago, uh, you, you and I, for the first time, sat down with Donald Trump and we we reviewed those rates and it was remember it was all about making America more competitive in the global economy and back then we had the highest business tax rate in the world on our American corporations and all the, it was like a 20 15 to 20 percent head start for all the countries we were competing with and we were losing capital we were losing jobs and factories to these other countries and as soon as uh, Trump cut those rates as you know, Larry, it's like a magnet. A lot of the jobs came back. I think the number was, you probably know the number better than me, but somewhere near $1 trillion, wasn't it, Larry, that came back to the United States? Oh, uh, you mean repatriation. Yes, repatriation. it was, it was yeah. over a trillion. It was like four or five yeah. times what anybody estimated. But Steve Moore, I just, you know, looking at Census Bureau numbers and Federal Reserve Consumer Survey numbers, I mean, inequality went down, poverty went down. <laughs> Real median income would hit a record high, 65, 66,000, 6,500 dollar increase in just two years, and the unemployment rates hit 50 year lows, Stephen. So I don't. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty good record. And the t and the, the yeah. rich, by the way, ha they lost their salt tax deduction, you know, which um, a lot of the Democrats tried to defend that oddly enough. So you know, Stephen, is this just redistribution as policy, or you know, do you think these tax cuts are going to slow the economy, or what's going to happen? Well, remember when they talk about raising the income tax rates, the you know the people at the top who are paying those rates, as you know, because we looked at this data, most of those people are small business owners. Larry, guess what? They employ people. They they create jobs. I'm not sure how we're going to get more jobs, Austin, by taxing the people who are creating the jobs. The other thing I found really interesting in looking at the latest IRS data, the percentage of the income tax paid by the richest one percent actually went up, Larry, yeah. after that Trump tax cut. They, they the rich paid more, just as you said, happened under JFK and under, and under Reagan. Best way Guys, to get the rich to pay more taxes is cut the rates. 
Go ahead, Austin. If you're convincing yourself that the American people <laughs> want to maintain a system where Donald Trump himself could pay $700 in taxes and that he shouldn't have his taxes yes. go up despite being a billionaire because it'd be bad for America, I think you're just on a different planet. Do you think, um, Austin, seriously, you think ordinary folks, blue collar folks, do you think, A, they'd like to see more after-tax income, or B, they really hate rich people and just want to punish them? Which do you think is more important? Well, I think they'd like to see more after-tax income, and they would like to see that high-income people are paying a fair share. And they show that in the polling. As I said, just look at what people think about the Trump tax cut. Either you think they're misinformed or they don't have the facts, but that is the most unpopular tax cut in the history of America. I never, I never saw those polls unpopular. I, you know, Trump scored uniquely well on economic mm -hmm. management throughout it. Right. You know, w w with all the other issues surrounding it, and we're not going to go there this evening, some other time, but he still maintained for four years a big majority of, you know, positives on economic management, including during the campaign, Austin. I would say he was strong on the economy while the economy was going well, and then those numbers began to bottom out as the economy spiraled into well, doom uh, well, wait because a minute, of Austin, the coronavirus I mean, response. If you look at some of these numbers, even the exit polls, even people who voted against Trump in the November elections, uh, the, the majority of them thought that Trump would be better on the economy than Biden, because it was a, a prosperous thing. The other thing to, to not to forget in this massive tax in plan that's being devised is the carbon tax, Larry. Mm -hmm. And that's something that would affect people of all incomes. And Austin, I wonder how it is that Joe Biden, who said he's not going to raise tax on anybody who likes less than $400,000, is going to institute a carbon energy tax when that would affect everyone. You know, Austin, I want to make a point, too. Uh, so you worked in the CEA under President Obama. Um, you did a good job, by the way. You always do. But President Obama wasn't a big taxer. I mean, he raised the top bracket a little bit, but he basically let the George W. Bush tax cuts stay in place. I mean, there were some tax hikes associated with Obamacare, I get that. But really, we're talking about a massive across-the-board increase in virtually every single tax. That's a different policy than you all had under Obama. I think you guys are smart. I don't think that's the Biden policy. I mean, B Biden has, if anything, said that the, the threshold below which he would not raise taxes is even higher than it was under Obama. He's have $400,000, as Steve said. So I don't think you're going to see any broad-based taxes that would apply to the middle class. I think you're going to see what he campaigned on. He said we're going to raise taxes on high-income people and big corporations because they got a $2 trillion tax cut that they didn't need. And so I think that's where you're going to see him Go and he won by seven million votes on that platform. So that's why I think that's what he's going to do. Because not to punish anybody, but to use that money to invest in the infrastructure of the country, which we need, and which your friends on the stock market know we need. Yeah. So when they say that they're going to pass well, that, the stock market has been. This going is why out. they though they love Joe Biden because he's giving them more cash to buy stocks and Bitcoin. They just love that. Steve Moore, ten seconds. I'll give you the last word. <laughs> Well, I, I, I will eat my hat if, if uh, Joe Biden is able to raise $2 trillion from rich people. It's never worked. They're, you're going to find the money isn't there. Rich people are good at finding ways to avoid yep. paying these high taxes. Tax they avoidance. Move, uh, short, Absolutely. They move it somewhere else. All right. So we've got a wager. He's going to eat his hat. Austin Goldsby, as always, great to see you. <laughs> Steve Moore, great to great see to you, see buddy. You Put a little uh, mustard on the side for that hat. <laughs>